Shalom Rastafari. Let's get into the second part of this, you know, the flow with the Holy Spirit, the overs. And um one of the first things that we that we saw um um in in, in earlier days and, and times in, in the ministry, and you can look go to our study page and you'll see a lot of the old um I don't say old, but the previous um the previous offerings and, and, and tracts and handouts and we want to speak to some of the brothers and the sisters out there to encourage ones to take like the threefold. Especially I think the first one should be Christ and his kingly character. You can find it on the study page. And just download the PDF, take it to like Kinko's or find some place where you can make a hundred copies of it double sided. You know what I'm saying? And fold them up, and there's an area there where ones can put, if one's having a Bible study or some gathering, or if you meet certain folks that might seem interested, and always consult with the Holy, you know, Holy Spirit to the glory of the Father in the name of Geta Chin, Jesus Christos, Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Black Lord and Savior, concerning whatever you do. Like his magic says, you know, the beginning of a thing and the end of a thing should be in the name of our Lord and Savior, in the name of in the name of, of Jah and Joshua, in the name of the Lord and his Christ or his um um Moshiach or Messiah. Now one of the older um I said it again, right? The one of the previous you can see this right here. Let's see if you can see this well. Now this is from one of them called, I don't know if I can show you the whole thing right here, you understand, who is the king of kings from the Kishate Barahan, right, and you can see that this was uh, Toxus, let's see if you can see it over here, Toxus 63, can't see it too well, but that would have been um, 1993, um, uh, because we counted from, um, counted as the Ameta Bejwa, or the year of the Redeemer, from um, and the year of our redemption from when Kedemawi Haile Shalase sat on the throne of David in Ethiopia in the 72 nations. So that will be November 2nd. So we count that as the Adis Zemin, right? So in some of the um, previous literature, you'll see that we use a different calculation of time. And you might see 63, and that will be 1993, roughly 1993. So 63 plus 30 is 1993. So we have put these out, like, you know, what does the real Christ man look like, right? Um, right here, like according to the scriptures, Revelation 1 and 14, his hair white as wool, and, and, and yes to Yeshua, yes us, right, and no to the seed of the Borgias, the counterfeit antichrist image, right? Then eyes as flame of fire, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You also not the blue eyes, but the the eyes of the f flame of fire are, is, is that is is the black man's eyes. And when you look at the black man's eyes and that focus of his majesty, that 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 sincerity, that directness, you over know, the eyes as flame of fire, feet like burnt brass, right? Verse uh, 15 of Revelation 1, and, and then says something interesting in, in 1 and 15. To look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. We did this in the earlier vid. But we actually look at the color of jasper and sardine. And that is that particular um, Ethiopian Hebrew complexion. Some call it olive. But, you know, there's, there's two kinds of olives. Well, actually, three kind, well, two kinds of olives. There's the green kind of olive and there's the black kind of olives. You know what I'm saying? Just as there are these two kinds of complexion among among original Ethiopian black people. You understand? There is the um there is the the so called lighter complexion, you understand the olive complexion, the Middle Eastern complexion, and then there's a darker complexion, which is also Middle Eastern but because of all this racism, you know, they try to make it seem like not because they pushed us out of our original land, went to captivity, don't you remember? So this is the man, he is the king of kings, Hila Salasa the first, the line of the tribe of Judah the elect of Egeziahir, or the named of God, the name of God, actually, when you go to the Ethiopic etymology, and the light of this world, he is our kinsman redeemer. Edomawi Haila Shalasi. This is our this is our kinsman redeemer according to the flesh. Let's understand that, according to the flesh. See, in order to really understand this, you really have to understand why Israel and the, the, the idea of Jew and Jewish 
and Judah and why all of this is important. You know what I'm saying? But you have to, first of all, recognize that there are, it says the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not part of the synagogue of Satan, right? That's not all Jews, you know what I'm saying? But that's a certain kind of manifestation that's in the world right now. Some call them the Rothschild Jews. But then you have the religious Jews who actually oppose or the Torah Jews who actually oppose the so-called Babylonian or the Talmudic you know, saying all the Rothschild Jews. I prefer to say Torah Jews versus versus Rothschild Jews. That kind of sets it pretty straight because the, the Rothschild Jews are lawless. You know what I'm saying? And lawlessness is iniquity, is rebellion against God. You understand? So, being that as it may, let us continue with this right here. This will be the part two, right? This will be the part two of um, Caesar versus the black Christ or Caesar's Antichrist, man, that might be better even, right? Caesar's Antichrist, right? Um, cool, cool. We got to know who and whom, this kind of, who and whom we are speaking of. So we had left off, right, or we had, we had, we had concluded the first part, the first hour or so. We concluded it right around here in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, where Yeshua HaMoshiach says, um, and I say to you, I say to thee, to the eye that thou art Petros. If you look up Petros, right, like we're using the word here, but you can use the blue letter Bible, and you look at Petros, it means a rock or a piece of rock, like a small rock, like a chip off of the big rock. And then when you look at the word for rock right here, it's not Petros, but it's actually Petra. Petra, you remember there was an artist, Petra? Petra means a mass, a big rock. You know what it is? a big rock. So he's saying that you are Peter, and upon this rock, upon this big confession of faith in the Moshiach, the Moshiach as the Son of God. Now, we already know when we look at this um, 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 Caesar's um, Antichrist versus the Black Christ, or Yeshua HaMoshiach, we already know who this is. Right? We know that this is Caesar Bogias. This is not the son of God. No, no, no. This is the son of Pope Alexander the Sixth. Now, and, and they don't stop there. His his sister, who some say he fathered a child, and you see that in the so-called White Mary, Virgo Mary picture, is actually Lucrezia. So these individuals of this very corrupt and even evil, sickly, evil family, you know, then would perpetrate this end times, this end times fulfillment. That's why it says like they, they it goes up to reach it up to heaven. Like when you see the Ethiopian athlete um, lift up that um, um, Lucretia, you understand um, 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 the serpent mother picture, right? Where she lifted that up. You know, the Olympus, the Olympics. It means Elysian or heavenly, celestial. You know, saying the Olympics by virtue of its name refers to the celestial. So we see that the blasphemy has reached, right, has reached up until heaven and has even reached into Ethiopia where we have a great falling away. You know, saying more and more this image right here of Antichrist is accepted in place of Ethiopia's own imagery and own testimony that goes straight forward to the Ethiopian eunuch. You understand? And that was at the very time. Remember, the Ethiopian eunuch, who was a Jew, a Hebrew, or Ethiopian, a Beit Israel, he accepted Yeshua as the Moshiach, you know what I'm saying, even before Paul got his conversion and his turnaround. But first he had to be blinded. Mm -hmm. Before Paul got his repentance, right, before Paul got his repentance. Now, remember the key date right here. Is 49. This is what he really looked like. This is what he really looked like. But he became the artist model, right, after the so-called Dark Ages for this new, um, this other Christ, right? Remember what Paul says? If someone came along for another Jesus, another gospel, you know what I'm saying? Another spirit that they call ghost. You understand? Ghost. You know, the Holy Ghost, which is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So see how the devil, Satan, has caused well-meaning Christian people to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Calling the Holy Spirit a ghost is a blasphemy. Now, 
Does it mean that everybody who did it is going to hell or something like that? Uh, don't, 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 don't go there. You see, a lot of well-meaning folks didn't have the knowledge, education, awareness that we have. But you got a lot of fools today who will know all these things and look it up and say, well, it doesn't really matter because my great-grandmother, your great-grandmother didn't know what you know. If your great-grandmother knew what you knew now, she would have she, she been saying what I'm saying, and she, her videos would be up on YouTube, too. She'd probably get more hits maybe than even me. But she'd be really out there blazing, you know, saying the Holy Spirit, not no Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? But this is a particular peculiar generation, a degeneration, a falling away generation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is a falling away generation that we're going through right now. So this apostasy, we're speaking about this apostasy. Now, some would say it doesn't matter what race. No, you know, no race equals seed, people. Seed, it doesn't matter what seed he is of. He must be of a particular seed of the house of David, and this is not it. Now, remember, at this very same time, the Roman Catholics, they were persecuting the Jews. The Jews at the time that they were persecuting and enslaving was not the Europeans you see today. You understand so much. Some of the Sephardis, they're, they're like the mulattoes, so forth and so on, almost like you could say Hispanics in a sense today. You understand when you look at a lot of their images, you can see that they're black, but they're right on the cusp of things. And now white supremacy this scourge. Remember, white supremacy is a deception of the devil on white people. White supremacy is a deception of the devil on white people. Because sincere white folks who really love the Lord and study it and search it out will recognize that truly they, they have baited and switched up on people and had people worshiping the image of the Antichrist. Because how do we know? By its fruit. You shall know them by their what? Mm -hmm. By their fruit. And this guy was fruity too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, on, on top of it, but not good fruity. You know what I'm saying? Tutti fruity. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, let's get back to the word. Let's, let, let's forward to the word. Let's focus on the word right now, right? Because the word, right? The word made manifest. The word made flesh. The word become flesh. So, so Yeshua said to Peter that you are that little rock, and upon this big rock, this sort of confession, you know what I'm saying, of him as the Messiah, Right, as the son of the living, you know what I'm saying? The living God, the Bain Ha Elohim, Chaim, you know what I'm saying? That I will build my church, the real church, not the building church, not this a church. And, and then go, go in Brooklyn, look around Brooklyn, look around Jamaica, you see a whole bunch of churches. You know what I'm saying? No, he says, build my church. Who's going to build his church? He's going to build his own church. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And it says, after the semicolon, and it says that the gates, of, um, the gates of hell. Let's look at this word hell for a moment. What's the word hell right here? Hell is Hades. What does Hades mean? Hades means the unseen. So if we were to read it with comprehension in the time, Right? Not, not, not this version, but the original version. Oh, we, study, we study and show ourselves approved, not disapproved. You know what I'm saying? We see that properly Hades means the unseen realm or the unseen region. Now, some people say that um, God is uh, not visible. Some say that he's only visible. You, you know what I mean? Like, it's like I'm bipolar. It's a bipolar uh, diabolical trick right there. He is both the seen and the unseen. He makes himself manifest for many ages. The only one that saw him or beheld him was his beloved son, our Lord and Savior, Yosem Yeshua HaMoshiach. And it's him that came and testified to us. Yosem Christ says, this is faith and this is eternal life, that we might know thee, know the true God, through the one who he has sent, and that is Yeshua HaMoshiach, our kinsman redeemer. Now, this point about the gates of hell, we, we, we segued in the, in, in the first part on the gates of hell because we've been doing some study on the gates of hell. This is really these stargates. The gates of hell is really these kind of stargates that are, oh, man, that's a whole other subject matter right there. And they say that, you know, the Babylon don't like you talking about the stargates. You understand? Know don't like that because some say that that's where the demonic entry is coming in. You know, um, the low level of it 
is the the witchcraft stuff or the or the Ouija board. That's a, that's a low level. That, that, that doesn't have enough power to, to, to break the prison or to break through that dimensional barrier right there. So even nuclear war and, and all this nuclear stuff is also a part of that when it's used improperly, when, when they turn nature, the five-pointed star, on its head, or they turn femininity on its head. That's why the deception and the rape of Eve was so important. Yes, Eve, Haywan, right, was raped. Yes, she was raped. You know what I'm saying? Because Christ says that the, the, the counterfeits are of who? The counterfeits are of their father, the devil. He was the first murderer. Who's the first murderer? Cain. What did Cain do? Brother on brother killing. You know what I'm saying? So these are warning things for us. So when we say, well, who is my brother? Each of us asks, who is my brother in spirit and in truth? Not who is a fellow black man or, you know, maybe my fleshy brother. Well, who is my true brother? You know what I'm saying? And this is very, very important. Now, the gates. Let's look at the word gates for a moment. What word do we have for gates? Pule. Pule, a gate. It says a leaf or wing of a folding entrance. Mm-hmm. Remember that it said that to the, to the uh, Aiden, there was a Kiru, a cherubim, who had a sword which turned both ways. Right? It's a leaf or as a wing, according to the Septuagint Greek, of a folding entrance, right? And it says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is the good news, brothers and sisters. This, this, is, this is the good news right here. You know what I'm saying? Yes, there are demonic entities. You know what I'm saying? Yes, there is all this craziness we're seeing behind it. If you're, if you're wise, to, you can see you can see the fingerprints, you know, saying of the fallen demons who have been let out, or some of them have broken out, so to speak. You know, saying or been broken out, like jailbreak. You know, saying jailbreak, and then they tell you about the Greys and the extraterrestrials and the Draconies and all this hierarchy. There is a demonic hierarchy. This is what Ephesians chapter five is preparing us for. And Ephesians, on the spiritual level, is like Joshua is on the physical level. Because Joshua brought them into the physical promised land, and it is Ephesians, you know what I'm saying, that in that sense helps us to fight in the spiritual promised land. Because remember, we, we are in heavenly places. When we enter in to Yeshua HaMoshe, when we enter into faith, we're entering into the kingdom of the heavens. There's a difference between the kingdom of the heavens and the kingdom of God. They, they are related, yes, but there's a key difference. You understand, and if you really study it, even the Schofield have some very relevant notes for ones to study. But what Christ is saying that his church, that even though the gates of hell will come against it, it will not prevail against it. You remember when we read, I think it's Matthew uh, chapter, Matthew chapter, um, chapter 7, right? The difference between the wise and the fool. You understand, and any of us can be that fool if we don't know how to be wise and we don't be wise. In Matthew, um, in Matthew, uh, let's bring this up right here, Matthew chapter 7, right? Matthew chapter 7, what does it say? Chapter 7, verse 24. This is a lot in it, but we're going to focus on chapter 7, verse 24, the two foundations. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. So we have to hear Yeshua's word in order to what? Do them. He says, anyone that does his doctrine, his Tim Herod, will know whether he was speaking of himself or whether it's truly our Godfather's word, whether it's truly Abba's word. I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. That's why in Ethiopia we have the rock hewn churches. Think about it for a moment. You know what I'm saying? You could really only see that it's a cross, really, if you get to a high enough altitude, but it seems to be made for heaven, for heaven to see it for heaven to recognize that X marks the spot, as they say, right? And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew. All the enemies and aggressors against um, the, 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 the blameless Ethiopians. These Ethiopians, they, they, they are blameworthy, you understand, although they like to blame Haile Selassie first. You know what I'm saying? But the rain descended and the winds blew, and the, the, the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, that church, that bait, Beit Christian, right? And it fell not. 
Look at what Ethiopia has been through just in the last um, 500 years. I mean, think about that for a moment. And, and, and look at where, where Antichrist has gone before, and everywhere was able to beat against and knock it down. Even though there were many, um, when I say good people, there were many people who were, were, were not um, evil people, if you all know, evil doers. You know what I'm saying? They may not have been good in the sense of, of good in Yeshua, because then their house will have been able to withstand the attack. Verse 26, it says, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, everyone that hears the sayings of the true Christ, of the Bible, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Right? It says right here, and doeth them not. So everyone is hearing it. Everybody has heard about Christ one way or another. You understand? Whether through in truth and sincerity or in pretense. You know what I'm saying? And we give thanks for it all. They've heard it. You know what I'm saying? But everyone that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man. Shall be what? Likened to a foolish man. Because they're hearing Christ's words. You know, like a lot of preachers in the past, they've heard Christ's words, they've preached Christ's words, but they have not, what, done it. You know, and they have not spoken up about the true things of God and spoken against the evil things and warned the sheeple and warned the people. You know, understand? Um, which built his house upon the sand. And see, the sand is the natural, right? Remember Abraham said that your descendants shall be as the stars of heaven? Now, where does that um, Lucifer or, or Halal HaShachar, where does Halal HaShachar, which is the Latin Lucifer, he seeks to set himself upon what the stars of heaven, which are the children of God. You know what I'm saying? That's why when you look in a black church, which have, have known the true Christ, and then see this image have crept in, you know something is wrong. You, you definitely know something is wrong. You understand? Building it upon the sand, the shifty sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Great was the fall. Babylon is what? Fallen is what? Fallen. Babylon is fallen. City so great, they got to name it twice. You got that right. You understand? But do you really know what the mystery, you understand, what this mystery you know what I'm saying? What, why is she called Mystery Babylon? And who is her daughters? You know what I'm saying? The Pope will tell you. The Pope said all the churches in the world, he's trying to claim all of them. You know what I'm saying? You call yourself Pentecostal, Protestant, Southern Baptist, uh, Methodist, uh, Unitarian. You know what I'm saying? The Tears, Unitears, Unitarians. You know what I'm saying? Um, it doesn't really matter. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're on that true Ritua uh, Hymenot, the, the correct, the right living faith, which is in spirit and in truth. So you can't be in just the right doctrine, you understand, and then you want to deny that this is not Christ. Yeah, I mean, you want to deny that this is Antichrist, that this is other than Christ. This is another Christ right here. You understand? This is a, look, he's showing you who he is. 1492, do the math, do the math. And you'll see, behold, the coming of the kinsman redeemer, right? And it's interesting because many of the other Christian denominations, like um, um, the Seven Day Adventists and Jehovah Witness, I mean Witness, and and others, <laughs> they have, um, you know, some of the elements that they've touched on are correct in a certain sense if you're guided by the Spirit. You know what But what we're looking at right here is the gates of hell, right? So the gates of hell will come against that church, but will not prevail. It will not prevail. And it goes on. Does it go on right here? Let's go to the, the next part. Verse 19, it says, and I will give to thee the keys, right? The keys of the kingdom of what? What is it? Heaven. Not the keys of the kingdom of God. That's in God's hands. You know what I'm saying? But the keys of the kingdom of heaven, which is the Christian profession or the profession of Yeshua as Haradia, uh, Haradia Petro said, Kepha, his Hebrew name, Kepha. Or well, some say Cephas, but the Kepha, as Kepha said. He said, you are the Moshiach. You are the Bain Ha Elohim Chaim. You are the son of the living God, the God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. You know what I'm saying? The God of the living, not God of the dead, the triune God. Besama'ah, where men says, Kedus, Ahadu Amlak, Shema, Yisrael. 
Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. Hail Israel, the Lord, he who is who he is. Thy God is one. The King of kings, our Father, is one. And Christ here says, I will give to thee, to Petros, and everyone who has that same testimony. You know, saying that, 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 that chip off of the old block. You know, saying has gotten that gift from the ancient of days, right? To thee, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And this is the spiritual dimension. This is, this is the true spiritual dimension of where the spiritual warfare takes place. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, right? Whatsoever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Now, how do we bind that? Now, what are the keys? The keys are affirmation and denial. The keys are our wall, our one, and our idelum, idelum. The keys are yea, yea, and nay, nay. You know, and the keys are what you affirm and what you deny. You know, and I mean, it's, it's, it's straight up as Christ, he, taught, he, he speaks of this throughout the scriptures. He speaks of this throughout the Wengel. And that's what we're going to touch on, the real Rastafari word, sound, and power. See, the Rastafari were correct. And are correct in, in that sense that they stay in that, on that groundation of word, sound, and power. But they don't understand it. Many don't understand it in the fullness of the Father and Son. They don't understand in the fullness of the testimony of His Majesty. You know what I'm saying? And that's why the movement seems to be in a state of inertia. And many Rastafari find themselves at this particular um, point, you know what I'm saying, along the journey. You know, was in between, you know, saying at that crossroads, so to speak, at the crossroads right there. You know, saying, and you can only get across, you know, saying when you recognize, right? When you recognize, right, that Yeshua, the Christ, is the way. He is the way now across that divide. It reminds me of the movie. You seen um, Indiana Jones? You remember the Indiana Jones movie? One of them, I don't know, part two or three or whatever. When they was in some cave or something, and there was a big gap between the two sides, a gulf between the two, and there was a, there was like a word that was like an inkokalish or a riddle or something like that, and it's something about walking like a lion or how a lion the lions walk or whatever, and then he remembered um, Indiana Jones. <laughs> And Jones is a is a no way of saying Johannes, the grace of, of Yah. He remembered, right, or the grace of God. He remembered that a lion walks one foot in front of the next. If you see, you know, look look it up on the YouTubes. You understand? Know a lion walks one foot in front of the next. Except if it's, you know, in different other modes, but usually it walks one foot in front of the next. Because it's straight past. The Muslims talk about a Suratul Mustaqim. Right, the Saratul Mustaqim, right, or the the Saratul Mustaqim, right, um, and that is a straight and narrow path in the Saratul Fatiha, or and Saratul Fatiha means the surah or the chapter of the opening, which is like their Lord's Prayer, so, so to speak, right, and it speaks about those who walk the straight and the narrow way, the straight path where Christ speaks, and that's Christ is the straight and narrow path, the true Christ path is the straight and narrow path. But what's happened, people have gotten caught up on demon nominationalism. They, you know, they prefer to get nominated by demons, you know, to fulfill not the will of the Father, the true Father, but the will of the other Father. You know, some can say Pope, so forth and so on, but that's just a placeholder right there. You know what I'm Because the real so-called um, via Father, you know what I'm saying, is, is, is Satan, is Diablos. You know what I'm saying? He's the real New World Order ruler. You know what I'm saying? His demon. They're basically the ones that are controlling the men and the people. You know what I'm saying? And, and they're controlling them by the same things that the devil try to control us on a lower level. You know what I'm saying? In unrepentance and unregeneration or, or, or lack of belief or lack of faith or worldliness. You know what I'm saying? All the things of the flesh. You know what I'm saying? Or the sinful Babylon man. The sinful Babylon man. You know what I'm saying? Which is founded on death. You understand? Know standing on the foundation of death. You know understand? Death and destruction. You understand? Know now, when we cross the halfway point, what do we find here? The teachings of HIM. We find the teachings of His Imperial Majesty of Ketamawi, Haile Selassie, or Shalase. And that now takes us across. That takes us the full way, the full measure. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like this Rastaman right here, running now he can run across, and he's setting foot on Jah's eternal life. You know what I'm saying? In this world and in the world to come. You know what I'm saying? So that one is eternally secure, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, sister? We're eternally secure. You know what I'm saying? In that admittance. You understand? See, Satan will come along and, and will try to plant seeds in your mind, weeds actually in your mind. You understand? And tell you, oh, that's just religion, or that's just, that's not real, it's not, it's invisible, or yeah, you're still the same person. They would try everything. You understand? They would try everything to make you believe a lie. You understand? And, and, and this is where that, those keys are important. Those keys of affirmation to affirm to our woe you understand our woe what is what is true and they'll say yay yay you understand says yes say yes you understand say Yeshua to that which is Yeshua's and and deny that which is Diablos that which is the devil's but we have to study and show ourselves approved we have to learn what the word is we have to fellowship you understand we have to recognize what the qualifications of fellowship you know, than really are, because we still are making, many of us are still are making novice errors because we haven't um, grounded our house on the rock. You know what I'm That means to hear Yeshua's sayings, right, to hear his sayings and to do them. You know what I'm saying? To hear and to obey, to shimma, right? And I, and I pray that we are that generation, that shimma generation, that generation who hears it and who does it. Because Shema is one thing. You understand? Many are called. You understand? Because the call goes out to all. They hear it, but they don't choose. You understand? They don't choose Yeshua. You understand? Because when we preach the cross or the Mescal, Christ crucified, you understand? It seems like foolishness with them. They're like, well, you know how many black men were, were, were crucified or were lynched, were hung on a tree? You know, and they still do it. So I don't change nothing. Because the black man is still going through this, that, or the other thing. And what they're speaking about, especially of the black man in America, they're really speaking about the lost sheep. You know what I'm saying? They're really speaking about the lost sheep who has not turned to the Lord. It's kind of similar, similar in what is said about the Jews, that the Jews are God's people or God's people, but they have not turned to the Messiah. It's one and the same, it's one and the same thing. And we're speaking about ethnic Israel, and we're speaking about Ainai as Beta Israel. You will see it in the fullness, in the full picture. Mm. Stay tuned for another vid that y'all will and hopefully we will be able to produce and to share it with the brotherhood. You understand? And it's on the counterfeit sign. Because there's a, there's a, they keep talking about Israel 1948. But there's something that happened for us also in 1948. You know what I'm saying? The true sign. So there's a there's the true Beta Israel or the black Jews, as the black Jews of Harlem, and as I and I, you know what I'm saying, as 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 Afro Americans and the so called black people in the Americas, the Caribbean and beyond. Mm hmm And with us is the faithful Jews. See, Torah Jews in that sense are down with us. Real Torah, uh, real Torah Jews. Those who are able to stand up against um, the counterfeit Zionism, you know what I'm saying, in the world. And you see there's a lot of Jewish people standing up, and the media never talk about them. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them getting a big-time fight, you know, where it comes to blows. Mm -hmm. Because they're basically, they're basically the ones that it says in the Bible. Who are the Torah Jews? Let me just show you who the Torah Jews are um, very briefly right here. The Torah Jews, turn your Bibles, if you will. To um, Revelation, Revelation chapter chapter three, right verse nine. It says, "Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet." Now, this is the red letter Bible, so it's Yeshua HaMoshiach. You, you understand? It's Him speaking You're in spirit, firstly and in truth, as a black man. You understand? According to his seed, according to his race. He says he will make them to come and worship, right? Worship before what? Before thy feet. Remember Ikev? We're in Ikev. And there's a lot of revelation that um, 
Yah, that Abba, the Father, is revealing to Aina on feet, on the feet, right? The feet of Christ, right? Remember the feet of Christ? And, and notice what this, this skull is right there. You know what I'm saying? That's your skull and bones. No, we're not your skull and bones, but we are the people who are in the valley of the dry bones. That's where black folks are right now. You know what I'm saying? We're in that part of the prophecy, which is the valley of the dry bones. And this is why we put this up here as a word picture. Now, 322 is very important, too, because look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Now, if you look in the Bible, Christ was crucified in a place called Golgotha. Golgotha. And Golgotha, you understand, it means the place of the what? The skull. So the place of the skull. You understand? Know and people are being killed there. People are being crucified there. You understand? Know people are being crucified. But most of all, our Lord and Savior was lifted up there outside of Jerusalem. Outside of Jerusalem. Just like we right now as black Jews and Ethiopian Hebrews are outside of Jerusalem and outside of what's going on right now. You understand? Know Among the Jews who say they are Jews. But the word says, that in the fullness that it is Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, as we hold to the giver, you understand, that will make them to come and to, and, and to worship before our feet to, and to know when, when, it's, when it's in the fullness of time to know that I have loved thee. And as many of our faithful, uh, they could be European, they could be of white European races, but they are faithful to the truth and they admit the same truth. And they even bring forth a lot much more information that, you know, it was like really amazing, like, wow. So we, were, we knew we were right, but now we even have more information to verify that fact, right? Because, right, he's going to do this because of what? So we have to recognize why is he doing this? For what reason? Red Letter Bible, Revelation 3 and 10, it says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Because we keep that word, right, that word of his what? Of his patience. See, patience is, the Revelation calls patience the faith of the saints. Um, James Yaakov, you know, in the first bishop of Jerusalem who was crucified, who was martyred, he says in, in his epistle, right, he says, let patience have her perfect work but without double-mindedness. See, saying maybe, I guess so, when if it's Yeshua's word, then it's our will and it's our main, period. You understand? And, and if you have to pray the prayer like the disciples, Lord, help my unbelief, or, you know, like there may be areas that one may be a little shaky, but pray that prayer and have faith that he, he's helping you, he's helped you already, and you need to receive it. You know what I'm saying? You need to receive that. So because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the what? The hour of temptation. The hour of temptation. Some, some, some um, Bible scholars say this hour of temptation is actually what we're about to go through. Some say it has a lot to do with the Nibiru, you understand, or the um, Cementenia uh, Shi uh, Kokep, or what we know in the Auda Negist as the, the star of the eighth millennium, or some call it the Passover Comet. You understand? This planetary, this small brown dwarf star. Before it was actually called a, 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 the black star. You understand? Nibiru actually was called the black star. You understand? For more than one reason. You understand? But it's also the Passover comet. Is this what it's speaking about here in Revelation 3 and 10? The hour of temptation? The hour of temptation? It says Babylon will fall within an hour. I know this is what it says about the word. It says a day with the Lord is as what? A thousand years. So how are we going to calculate day? Are we going to calculate the 12-hour day? Right? And since Christ is the one, he says that there are 12 hours, right, in a day. Now, some would say 24, but it's Yeshua that's our master. So what does Yeshua say? Yeshua says, are there not 12 hours in a day? So we take the 12, and this is for all you mathematicians out there. You take the 12. If Christ says that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, right, as a thousand, if the word, the prophets say that, you know, since speaking Yeshua, speaking Christ, says it's as a thousand years then what part of 1,000 would an hour be? An hour will be one-twelfth of a 1,000, right? One-twelfth of a 1,000. So do the math on one-twelfth of a 1,000. Of a what is, what is, what is a, 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 a twelfth, 
You understand? Twelve goals into um, what is it? Twelve goals into uh, um, how would you do this? A uh, hundred. You understand? Twelve goals into a hundred. How many? How many times? You understand? How many times? What five or six? This is what's very very interesting. You understand? And we have to really you know understand this right here, and we're gonna have to do the math. Right? We have to do the math. Now, some folks laugh at this, but it could be the demons who are trying to make them think that this is a joke. This is, this is no joke, my brothers and sisters. You understand? This is no joke. This is our life, right? And this is our eternal life. So now, Christ breaks down for us. Remember, there's an hour of, of, of temptation. How long is this hour of temptation? What portion, right? What portion of a thousand years so 12 goes into it how many times about 80 times and i'm mean, excuse me about it'll be, it'll be about um eight times so then you carry over the remainder you understand if you carry